How will Starship avoid the follies that the Space Shuttle suffered from in regards to its thermal protection system? The Space Shuttle was supposed to be rapidly reusable, but as NASA discovered, the thermal protection tiles needed significantly more in-depth checkouts between flights. This contributes to giving Shuttle a typical minimum turnaround time of four or five months. If SpaceX aims for rapid reuse with minimal or no safety checks between launches, how can they upgrade the TPS on Starship to meet those requirements? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Turnaround flight is a familiar term in aviation. The lunar Starship will be equipped with four landing legs. In addition, the systems to launch a rocket and the rocket itself inherently are more complicated than the aircraft making the turnaround between the rocket's launches take more time. This puts an extremely big challenge for SpaceX's fully reusable Starship rocket, as Elon Musk aims to make it as quickly reusable as an airplane. It means that the vehicle's design needs to be greatly simplified, but it also must be safe enough to require minimal to no safety checks between the launches. And a notable component here is its thermal protection system, which plays a vital role in saving the spacecraft against the risk of becoming a giant fireball in space during its re-entry. There are indeed similarities between the thermal protection systems used on SpaceX's Starship spacecraft and NASA's retired Space Shuttle orbiter. It's certainly plausible that SpaceX's engineers drew inspiration from various thermal protection technologies, including those used on the Space Shuttle orbiter when designing the thermal tiles for the Starship spacecraft. The EATB Enhanced Avcoat Thermal Barrier Tiles with TUFI Toughened Unipiece Fibrous Insulation Coatings with Added Molybdenum Desilicide, which were introduced in the later years of the Space Shuttle program, were known for their improved durability and performance compared to earlier tile designs. The reason why few TUFI tiles were used on the shuttles is due to weight concerns. TUFI is less fragile than the older RCG Reaction Cured Glass coating, but also heavier. The incorporation of many very large fibers into the Starship tiles is indeed an interesting aspect, which could be by design or indicative of something else. While the spectral analysis indicates the presence of molybdenum, determining whether it's present at the same ratio as in NASA's tiles would require more detailed analysis and comparison. The presence of silica, alumina borosilicate and aluminum oxide in the fibrous material of the Starship tiles is consistent with the composition of the AETB tiles. This strongly suggests that the Starship thermal tiles are based on the research done during the shuttle program. However, the Starship team would never settle in the shuttle's old TPS, which exposed the fatal flaws of the shuttle's era. As a result, a revolutionary reform was applied to this modern space vehicle if Starship is to be rapidly reusable, then the heat shield will have to be much more durable and easier to repair than the complex and easily damaged Space Shuttle heat shield. Most of the 24,300 tiles on the Space Shuttle measure about 6 inches long on each side, 15.25 centimeters, and vary in thickness from 1 to 5 inches, 2.54 to 12.7 centimeters, depending on where they are attached. Honestly, they have various shapes, sizes and materials. This comes from the spacecraft's design with a complex curvature that extends in all three dimensions and the amount of heat affecting each location is not the same. Therefore, it required a wider covered area as well as a separate type of tile for each area. It seems to be inconvenient when shields from a certain area fall, you have to find an exact replacement for that area or take additional time to create new ones. By contrast, Starship's TPS is a collection of around 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles on one side of the craft. Such a uniform design allows the quicker replacement as you just make and copy a hexagon-shaped sort with the same material and size. They are made from a dense, tough ceramic called TUFROC, whereas the orbiter tiles had a fiber, foam, and aerogel core that was very insulating but was rather fragile and prone to absorbing moisture. TUFROC is suitable for reusable entry heating at 2900 plus Fahrenheit and with single use potential up to at least 3600 Fahrenheit. TUFROC was initially developed for NASA's X 37 project and ultimately resulted in use on the Air Force X 37B as the wing leading edge of the vehicle. 
TUFROC has similar high temperature capability compared with carbon slash carbon, but is manufactured at an order of magnitude lower cost and faster schedule. As you can see, the Starship requires fewer bricks than the shuttle, so it cuts down on the vehicle's dead mass. Because the Starship is so large, covering its entire body with heat shields is not an economically smart choice, so the spacecraft only has heat shields on one side. This makes sense because stainless steel on Starship is inherently heat resistant, so the Starbricks on one side is just an additional layer of protection as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere with the belly flop maneuver at high speed. The stainless steel surpasses aluminum used in NASA's spacecraft in resistance to heat. This means that your heat shielding material can be much lighter and more robust, which is exactly what SpaceX is doing. Stainless steel construction should be less vulnerable to small gaps between tiles, which should allow wider tolerances for installation and inspection and less susceptibility to minor damage. With the Space Shuttle's aluminum airframe, excessive heating can cause rapid and catastrophic melting of the structure. Most spacecraft use aluminum alloy airframes that lose all their effective strength at around 350 to 400 Celsius degrees. This places a high thermal burden on their heat shields, which must keep the inside temperature at a level below this in order to maintain their structural integrity. Instead of using glue technology to bond the tiles to the vehicle's hull like in the shuttle era, the Starship tiles appear to use pins to fasten tile. The rear of the tiles may have holes for some adhesive or threads with inserts. Underneath the tiles is the white insulation required to isolate the super cold propellant in the tanks. All this will see temperature swings super cold on the stainless steel side when the propellant is loaded and super hot on the black tile side when returning from orbit. Besides contraction and expansion, everything will flex and bend from launch, flight, and return forces. So, all the insulation and tile must be allowed to move too. To top it off, hot gas on re-entry likes smooth surfaces, so any transitions create unique design challenges. The adhesive bonding method used to secure heat-resistant ceramic tiles to the body of the Space Shuttle Columbia is known for its inability to withstand high temperatures. Ceramic tiles are brittle, so using both the tiles and the adhesive bond creates a situation that is prone to malfunction and could spell trouble, says Deborah D. Chung. Niagara Mohawk Professor of Materials Research in the UB School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and Director of UB's Composite Materials Research Laboratory. In the case of Columbia, Chung speculates that cracked or missing tiles would have exposed adhesive silicone bonds to very high temperatures. This would cause the degradation of the bonds and the loss of more tiles exposing the shuttle body to extremely high temperatures upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. According to Chung, there are other, more heat-resistant ways to connect tiles to the shuttle body. Brazing, which is like soldering except that it involves higher temperatures, creates joints able to withstand temperatures as high as 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the brazing material used. In contrast, adhesive joints can only withstand much lower temperatures around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Brazing, however, is a more expensive and involved process than adhesion. This could be a reason that it wasn't used for the Columbia, Chung says. Chung also suggests that NASA consider using a much higher proportion of carbon-carbon composites in place of aluminum to construct the shuttle's airframe. Carbon-carbon composite materials, which were in their infancy when the Columbia was built about 20 years ago, are now well developed. They are much more heat-resistant than aluminum and are considered to be the best material available today for high-temperature, lightweight structures. Chung says. After Starship's historic second launch, the engine, hot staging techniques, and Stage Zero were the things that SpaceX fans were most hotly discussing. However, there is a small but equally important part that needs to be mentioned here, which is the heat shield. During the Starship's ascent, the camera captured images of several heat shield tiles falling off the vehicle. After the launch, many of them were scattered on South Padre Island. Some people felt excited as they found it on the ground and shared their happiness on YouTube. While for fans, finding the pieces of the heat shield is a blessing, this is not the case for SpaceX itself. The hexagonal black tiles attached to Starship's outside are called the heat shield or star brick as a part of the Thermal Protection System or TPS. Made of ceramic material, 
these tiles are designed to protect the spacecraft during atmosphere re-entry. You know, Starship is expected to back home with a speed of 5 miles per second. It means the rocket would go so fast that it would be massively compressed air ahead of itself, known as adiabatic compression. This will create a shock wave in front of the Starship rocket, which generates super hot plasma. This plasma is so hot that without any thermal protection, it could literally melt the stainless steel on the Starship's body. Thus, it's safe to say that TPS plays a crucial role in Elon Musk's plan to reuse his rocket. Imagine what if a system failure occurred during the spacecraft's re-entry into the atmosphere, such as a falling thermal tile. Remember the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster in 2003? In addition, it's not the first time these star bricks have fallen off during Starship test flights. Although the company found a way to fix it before Ifton, a similar matter still occurs. Thus, one more time put a new challenge for SpaceX. So what caused the failure on those heat shields on November 18 and how did SpaceX improve it? Perhaps they missed out on testing each tile individually with a suction cup to verify their adhesion, as they usually did in previous tests. As a part of the FAA's requirements, SpaceX has to solve the problem of heat shield by finding a more reliable way to attach the tiles to the rocket, either by using a stronger adhesive or by installing them on an elevator. And what did they do? Let's take a look at this barrel and you will see a different pattern of pins for attaching heat tiles. Of course, they still use a system of three clips for each tile, but instead of being spaced as far apart as previously, now those three clips move closer together. This hinted at the reduction of the brick size, which would significantly improve the heat shield tiles' strength, making them harder to crack. Perhaps SpaceX will apply this new design for the whole system on the vehicle, or they will use a hybrid approach, given that just installing the smaller size tiles in more challenging areas like near the flaps, while the majority of the ship's area is unchanged. Besides that, the new heat tiles might be getting a metal insert for an unknown reason. Some suppose that it looked like a secondary protective layer in addition to the star brick outside, within the context that if the heat shield falls out, at least the stainless steel skin is still protected by that metal. However, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense because Starship already has an effective linning of protection. It is a white, flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of Starship. That mat is probably something like Kyowool 3000, which can be used up to approximately 1530 degrees Celsius without fail. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat will still be adhered to the ship. Anyway, all are just my speculation. So far, we have not heard any official information about the upgrades on TPS. Hopefully, the system will be perfect during the upcoming orbital flight of Ship 28, where the rocket is expected to perform a soft landing, meaning the TPS will be fully tested. Unlike the engines or propellant tanks, there's no way to test the complete TPS on the ground. For that reason, SpaceX must test the system through test flights, and they have started doing that since the early days of Starship. Back in 2019, seven prototype tiles arranged in a hexagon shape were seen on Starhopper in the vehicle's testing. This allowed the engineer to see how the tiles would fare with engine vibrations. They seemed to work just fine as all seven were still attached after the vehicle's 150-meter hop. Parallel to Starship's flow of evolution, the number of tiles on each prototype also grew gradually. SN4 featured 22 tiles and SN5 was 17, while larger and larger tile sections were incorporated on later ships, with SN16 having 1,935. Among those tests, several tiles were cracked, shattered, or even just fell off, and as a result, SpaceX gained the necessary data to improve the system. After that, the company went as far as installing 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles on one side of Ship 24, the first orbital prototype taking part in the integrated flight test with Booster 7. Although there were some reports of black tiles cracking and peeling during Ship 24's testing before April 20, 2023, it did not matter since during the orbital flight. I was pleasantly surprised by the tenacity of the heat tiles during the rocket's ascent. Two years ago, NASA even planned to monitor SpaceX's Starship Starbricks heat shield during IFT-1. Specifically, 
NASA's scientifically calibrated in-flight imagery SCIFLI team planned to conduct a SCIFL I Starship re-entry observation. During the test, the agency would monitor the stainless steel spacecraft's heat shield as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere with an aircraft that would carry a new instrument called SCIFLI Airborne Multispectral Imager. Unfortunately so far, Neither Ship 24 nor Ship 25 could enter the re-entry phase, so NASA has not yet gotten an opportunity to conduct its plan, and we have not yet witnessed TPS perform its main role. However, with the lessons that SpaceX collected through the past test flights, then applied to their spacecraft and their thermal protection system, everything would be changed in the future integrated test flights. At that time, SpaceX's ultra-simple design could give Starship massive advantages over NASA's space shuttle or any spacecraft in both the safety and financial aspects. SpaceX is aiming to make the upper stage fully reusable, which will be a first in the aerospace world. The company already reuses the first stage boosters of its Falcon 9 rockets, but it has to manufacture a new second stage for each mission. Therefore, the second stage remains a big component of the launch costs of a Falcon mission, even if SpaceX reuses the first stage. Unlike the Falcon 9's second stage, which is not designed to transport humans, Starship's upper stage will double down as both a cargo and crew transportation, depending on the mission profile. The heat shield is crucial for Starship's survival, as it will flip itself at an angle that exposes the shield to either the Earth or Mars's atmosphere. A tiny error in this area will result in the spacecraft's disintegration during landing and threaten the lives of the crew on board should it receive a human rating. Regarding the financial aspect, ensuring TPS works effectively plays a key role in making Starship fully reusable, thus cutting down the cost per launch to the maximum level. In fact, Starship will eventually be able to deliver about 100 tons of cargo to any planet in the solar system, such as Mars, for as little as $50 million. For comparison, the partially reusable space shuttle costs $1.5 billion to lift only about one quarter of what Starship will, and only into low Earth orbit. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.